I lie for you Thinking I die for you Jonas, he cry for you Do things when you want me to Like controller Controller hey what's up everyone welcome back to my channel if this is your first time joining me what it do baby welcome to my channel i hope you guys had a wonderful festive season before we get into this video i'd like to thank you guys so much for 2000 subscribers <laughs> i'm so excited thank you guys so much for continuously subscribing i know i have been so inconsistent on here but i'm back i think i should call this video a travel guide to turkey because everything i'm going to say in the video i think would be beneficial for someone who would like to travel to turkey so last year in october me and my boyfriend spent two amazing weeks in turkey it was my birthday gift if i can put it like that so shout out to him shout out to my babe for showing me the world literally it was my first time traveling internationally it was my first time leaving south africa we visited three different cities um istanbul which is the capital city of turkey then cappadocia which is sabu village Nyana, and then antalya which is sort of beach vibes i'd say maybe like a durban or cape town or south of south africa if I'm being completely honest, I did not vlog every single thing, um, but I do think I captured just enough for you guys to see um, and sort of get a feel of what we got up to, how much we spent on stuff. So I've gathered five categories that I'll speak about for each country, and those will be accommodation, food, transportation, alcohol, and activities. Actually, I did not track every single cent that we spent, but um, everything that I will show you guys is an accurate calculation and all of the costs are for two people first things first is planning you guys do your research find out as much of information as you can about the place that you're going to it gets tricky when you have to move from city to city um, you need to check what time you're going to arrive to the next city when you can check in if you're going to be waiting or not luckily for us we had all of that planned so with every accommodation that we stayed in we just really just checked in the moment we got there we have a thing against agencies like i've heard way too many bad reviews about agencies to trust them with an international trip with my accommodation details overseas and then what you understand what i'm saying so we'd rather do everything ourselves and if you'd like to do the same then maybe this video is going to be very beneficial to you as well so keep watching while you're here please do subscribe like the video and yeah let's officially get into it as i was still saying research is very important when you'd like to travel to turkey um, the exchange rate is very important like for example in turkey they use liras one turkish lira at that time was 98 cents in south african rand so which was perfect by the way turkey is one of the cheapest places that you can travel to from south africa which brings me to my next point which is book return flights especially if you're going to be applying for things like visas um luckily in our case we actually did apply for visas and we got them but we didn't have to pay for them so that's the nice thing about turkey you don't pay for the visas as far as i'm concerned right now you just apply for them um if you're not sure where to get them because there are a lot of sites on the internet that sell fake visas and charge you for them just call the turkish embassy and that is here in south africa they will give you all of the details you need to know to get a visa to get into turkey and you'll be set that's what we did constantly check the flights to your destination even though i was not really involved in the flight process my boyfriend was very hands-on he was literally checking flights every single day he knew when the price increased he knew when it decreased when it was just low enough for us to book he booked them just in time i'm not sure about the exact rand but i do know that our return flights for the both of us cost around 17,000 rand and we use qatar airways the flight that we took was from south africa to doha we stopped in doha for a connecting flight that flight trip was around eight hours long we got to doha um waited for about three hours 
and then after that we took our next flight which was from doha to istanbul turkey and that took around three hours as well so in total our travel time was around 14 hours there were no ubers anywhere else in turkey except for istanbul and where there were ubers they were very expensive the uber from the airport to there cost us around 400 rand which is a rip off the area we stayed in was called karikoi it's under asia so i don't know if you guys knew this but turkey has two sides one in the asian side and one in the european side we knew that going there but i didn't know the place that I had booked, which was in Karikoi, was in the Asian side. So I booked all of our accommodation through booking.com. Once again, this is an agency's job, but you know me and DIYs, DIY for life. It's not even about the DIY for me. Number one, agencies just charge way too much for a job that I feel like you can do. Number two, you're going to be spending so much on holiday anyway. Why don't you save up on the admin and do it yourself? You know, other people, of course, pay for the, the convenience of it all, but get each to their own, I guess. Um, the name of the hotel is called Irma Times Hotel in Karikoi. Like I said, you'll find a lot of locals there, street food, tech shops literally everything you want think of it go find it you will get it even though it is on the asian side of turkey it was quite easy to navigate um from the asian to the european side and vice versa and so we spent around five days in istanbul um once again do your research you'll know how many days you need to spend in each specific city so we stayed around five days in istanbul we explored the city we explored the towns around it we explored the islands around which was great which brings me to my next point transportation so um what i found amazing in turkey is their transportation system it is great it is efficient it works okay so the alternative to an uber in turkey is um transport called by taxi by taxi are those yellow taxis that you normally see in movies <laughs> but in turkey they're called by taxi and they do not come cheap either if i'm being quite honest obviously on the day that we checked in we didn't do much we just went out and found some food came back in drank alcohol just before boarding our flight to doha we stopped by duty free we got ourselves two whole liters of alcohol number one we know that turkey is a muslim country so the alcohol sold there does not come cheap at all so we got one liter of jameson and then one liter of tequila which is so funny this alcohol lasted us throughout our whole stay in istanbul um if i'm being honest we kept buying a few drinks here and there each time we were out the one liter of jameson plus the one liter of tequila cost around 850 rand at the airport i'd say we spent around 1350 rand on alcohol for five days this is now excluding restaurants that we went to alcohol that we actually went to the shop bought came back with 100 1350 rand right on to the activities that we did so most of the activities that we got up to were on the european side of turkey which was no problem at all um considering the fact that you get there via ferry a single ferry trip was eight liras per person 16 liras um for a return trip for one person it's literally the cheapest thing this is what i was talking about with the transportation um it was a walking distance from where we booked to the ferry it gets quite packed so just get there hell it doesn't even matter what time you get there if you're there on time whether you're the last person boarding or the first person everyone is going to fit in there because they are huge one of the things that we did on the european side was visit the grand bazaar the grand bazaar is apparently one of the oldest and largest marketplaces in turkey um damn i think i've just summarized it just there there's you will find everything there from bags shoes perfume <laughs> let me not forget to mention that all of these products are counterfeit products so none of them are real i can attest to that i was there i saw them i felt them 
I smelled them so now I'm talking about the perfume but basically we went through hours of just walking and walking which was my least favorite part but I got to see everything that I needed to see it's one it's regarded as one of the first shopping malls in the whole world guys I had planned to buy my mom a bag there man um, I didn't really want like a bag of tin. I just wanted a simple bag, no name brag, a plain, nice souvenir to you. But obviously that didn't happen because there, there's not a single bag, a single perfume, a single shoe, a single wallet that is not branded. You'll find Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Goyard, guys. Fendi, the list is endless. So after the Grand Bazaar, we went through the streets of Turkey. Once again, a lot of food stalls on the road, a lot of public transport trains. I forgot trams, they actually call trams. Um, so in GA, if there's one thing that isn't an issue here, it's transportation, it's very cheap. Um, with the trams and the metro bus, you can always pay with your bank card as long as you have the tapping option on it Then you can easily pay with your card. If not, you need to make a Bus card or a train card or a tram card, which will be very inconvenient But it will help you a lot and it is way quicker Finally got to Hagia Sophia, which is one of the biggest mosques in Turkey one of the biggest museum slash mosques. Apparently it was a mosque until around 1938 and it's been a museum since then. Although a lot of people do also still um, pray there every single day. So from the research that I had made, I had already known that entering there you need to be covered up, shoes off, head or hair covered. Um, legs covered it's a very sacred place okay, that's the Hagia Sophia by this time let me tell you something guys like don't be like us don't try fit everything in one day we did the Grand Bazaar walked all the way like if you open up a map from the Grand Bazaar to the vicinity where the Hagia Sophia is <laughs> oh my gosh we had been walking for hours that's just the one thing that i did not like on the trip but i will say one thing though had we not walked for so long we were not going to see all of the things that we saw the historical sites the the cones the guys you can just as long as you born we just got to see the city of Turkey properly explore most corners that we could have have good food I even had corn from the side of the road I was disappointed because it's not like the normal corn that we have like umbona it's sweet corn uh, we got tattoos in Istanbul as well this was very impulsive okay we did not plan on getting a in getting tattoos but my boyfriend had not been tatted before and this was his opportunity like first of all their tattoo prices were cheap so we are not gonna let that go number two their work was incredible what more exciting way of making memories in another country than getting tattoos like <laughs> I was five to getting matching tattoos with my boyfriend but um, we didn't do that so in total i'd say the food that we had cost around one thousand three to one thousand five hundred rand in istanbul alone and that's really because we had the accommodation that we had booked came with breakfast every single morning we had breakfast at the hotel so um that's the one thing that you need to do for yourself before you go exploring or want to see stuff have breakfast eat especially if you're going to be like us and drink as well another thing i have a problem with was the turkish breakfast guys i took this for granted the turkish breakfast there is no bacon you will find an egg if you're lucky a lot of cloney a lot of fried slap chips um cucumber uh tomato lettuce cheeses breads guys <laughs> whoa it honestly was not that bad but i did expect more but i mean it's a muslim country they 
are not going to promote eating bacon in restaurants or hotels so i kind of get it at the same time i wish i had prepped myself for that because it was just like oh my gosh by the end of the trip i want bacon and then it was time to move on to Cappadocia. So with Cappadocia, once again, research very, very important. Very important to know if you're going to be traveling around, how are you going to get there? The times you're going to arrive there. Will you be there in time for check-in or are you going to be waiting around until Lord knows when? Oh my gosh, so the next destination was Cappadocia. Guys, Cappadocia, I'll tell you one thing about it, like, for me personally, personally, this is in no way to discourage anyone else from visiting the is it a city in community Lali? It's so Lali vibes. I'm not even joking. So with Cappadocia, it's sort of like a village. We only stayed luckily two days there. Um, I'm just going to insert pictures so you guys can get the feel of how the place looked like. I was actually anticipating how it looked like. It looked exactly how it looked on photos and videos that I've seen before. But I did not expect this. Guys, everything there cost almost double what it cost in Istanbul. I mean, I think it's because they know it's such a tourist attraction and that you won't get any of these things that you want anywhere else or anywhere near. Most of the people that are actually in that town are tourists. But we had a very lovely experience. Um, we checked into this hotel that is owned by a family, a small family. It was cozy. It was so beautiful, exactly the way that I expected it to be from the photos. Mr. Gohan, the person that was assisting us with everything, booking our activities was amazing. One thing that you do need to know there, you will have to book your activities through the hotel that you're sleeping at. Um, they're called transfers. They can even most of the time take you to where or what you will be doing. One of the activities that we did there was ATVs, basically a quad bike. It was so expensive though for quad bikes, but I will say it was very much worth it. When we go on vacations, one of the things that we always do are quad bikes. Um, and I must say, shame, the route that we did take was amazing. It made the whole price feel worth it, even though I was kind of mad that they didn't tell us the price we were paying was for one quad bike and two people. I would have loved to drive my own. But right after we checked in, we left to go to town. So town is where like all of the shops are, um, restaurants, sightseeing, ATVs, horse riding. It's where everything is. It's like the central of Cappadocia. It's called Goreme. It was 65 to 68 liras a trip from our hotel to go to Goreme. Guys, once again, the buy taxi prices, I am not happy because that distance was not even, I think 10 kilometers if I'm not exaggerating. I think it was less than 10, I think it was five kilometers actually, and it was 68 rand. So we made those trips, I think three or four times, so 68 times that amount. So imagine, it was crazy. We explored some restaurants, we wanted a place where we could have something to eat, relax as well, and basically just take in the fact that we were in Cappadocia, we got a restaurant, and girl, I've never felt cheated in my whole life. <laughs> I felt like crying. So we ordered lunch. This was the lunch. And everything cost 700 grand. On that day alone, we spent over a thousand grand and we had barely done anything. By the time it was the evening, we realized that we actually had the whole hotel to ourselves. So we enjoyed the terrace all on our own watching the sunset having some wine the following morning we had planned to wake up very early in the morning and actually do what we had planned on doing and that is to see the hot air balloons and you need to wake up at around 3 34 half past four to catch those as they set off into the sky unfortunately we did not get on one because there is no way in hell 
I am paying 3,200 Rand just to get into, on my own by the way, this is just an individual price, 3,200 Rand to get on an air, air balloon where there's 20 of us. I thought, okay, 3.2 Nyana, there's going to be a picnic or like um, cheese board Nyana for me and my man and the driver of the hot air balloon. None of that, guys. It was going to be over 6,000 Rand to get into an air balloon with over 20 people inside of it. For me, that just did not seem worth it. I was just good with watching them sit into the sky, did my prayers a little bit, watched the sunrise, watched the balloons, and we headed back to sleep at around six seven after that we woke up we had breakfast once again all of the accommodation that we booked came with breakfast i can't emphasize how important this is you don't want to wake up early in the morning and go out to look for food uh, not an option make sure you book breakfast with all of your accommodation thank me later i must say the breakfast there is much was much better than the one that we had um at Irma Times hotel simply because they had more i was more familiar with the things that they gave us i think that's the word to use after breakfast we just um changed and headed to uchisa castle fun fact the hotel we stayed at had a view of a whole view of uchisa castle which is the cave home apparently there used to be people that stayed there we went up the cave uh, until the highest point took a lot of pictures um, so yeah, it was a great experience, nothing too exciting, but it was also great to get up there and see the whole of Cappadocia from that point. After the whole trip, I realized that, you know what, I could have skipped Cappadocia and spent more days in Antalya, but I'm so glad that we did Cappadocia. So Namdi is a banana experience and tell people how it is. And Namdi is I know I'm good with it next time. I'm on way, but... <laughs> I didn't baba, but anyway, yeah, um, personally for me, if you'd like, you can skip Cappadocia, you won't miss out on much, if I'm being quite honest, but it's also a good to have gone to place. This is the one destination that we were looking forward to, because this was sort of like holiday vibes, this is where we were going to just relax, not much of sightseeing, not much of doing too many activities because the place that we booked itself was like Sabu Resort um, the name of the place that we booked was Veranda Suites before I get into the nice stuff oh my gosh an unfortunate incident almost happened it was so crazy um, we almost got scammed at this hotel so remember I told you I booked everything through booking.com ne? right so with all of our accommodations that we booked we had planned to pay when we get there pay when we check in because number one we have trust issues number two um we've had um experiences where places have cancelled days before we arrive so we just didn't want to take that chance hence the option of paying when we get to the accommodation our second night in istanbul i get this whatsapp text from this number let me read them out now uh, greetings from Turkey, Veranda Suites. This is Anil Bajaj, the manager of Veranda. We are happy to receive your booking and are happy to host you and your group. Please check out the information below as the villa is also listed on many other online portals, most of which are prepaid. We need to fix the dates for you. Once you make the prepayment, your booking will be confirmed. Until then, it is on hold. Please make the remaining prepayment by today. Would you prefer to pay via IBAN? I don't know what that is or booking.com link. Can you tell me when you can do this? I'm panicking because, oh my gosh, I do not want to lose our booking or because we won't make a payment when they ask us to. So I'm like, okay, hi there, Anil. I hope you're well. Can I make the payment by tomorrow? Is that fine? He's like, yes, you can do it tomorrow when you are ready. Please let me know. Then I will send you a link to pay. Have a great evening. Mind you, the excitement is way above our heads we're not thinking about this i lie to him i say we will be landing tomorrow morning in turkey we were already in turkey by the way he takes me with a different number he says good evening again unfortunately the owner of the apartment has informed me that you need to pay for your booking therefore you need to book your apartment number one this is a hotel it's not apartments so in my head the first confusion was like how can the owner of the apartment is this not a hotel and if there was a problem with e-payment, wouldn't booking have said anything? That was two points. Mind you, we are busy 
<laughs> making the hell out of our heads that night. So hey, I know that's fine. I'll make the payment just now. Guys, I don't know what happened. Literally, my boyfriend threw me his bank card. As I'm about to process the details into this link that he sent me. By the way, he deleted the link. Eventually, we decided that we'd call the hotel. The lady at reception told us that it's a scam and that we should not pay the money. Number one, where did they get our information from? It had to be a member of the staff of the hotel. Otherwise, where were they going to get my contact details from? When we got to check in at the hotel, we asked them again. They said another couple had already paid. Funny thing is that Anil Bajaj is the actual manager of the hotel. It's just that someone is impersonating him and or her using their name. Eventually, we checked in. Uh, how much were the burgers? Do you remember? Five euros. Each burger. And so I remember in, to in total it was like 200 rand. 30 rand. Yeah, something like that. For things. both. For both. Oh, no, just the burgers. For both burgers. Yes. This, so this is the um, place that we should have stayed longer at. One of the highlights of Antalya was visiting the beach. Oh my gosh, the beach side was amazing, guys. This is where I just let loose. Um, it was so hot compared to Istanbul and Cappadocia. Antalya was hot, 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 hot. It's very important to know how you're going to go from point A to point B. We almost tired a car, but we decided against that. Um, we used the metro, is it called the metro bus? It's called the metro bus. Ask a lot of locals, ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask people to help you. I think that's the one thing that helped us here, yeah, Antalya, just learning how to get around, asking the hotel receptionist. Once again, the transport yes, uh, Turkey in general is, I think it's it's quite affordable, it's yeah. cheap. It was like eight rand for the both of us. Or was it 16 rand? Well, sometimes we pay for both of us, sometimes we pay for Yeah, them. sometimes we would pay like one fee for the both of us, sometimes it was separated and yeah like guys i could go on and on and on and on about antalya but there's not really much to say we literally just had a holiday there chilled we didn't do much went to the beach ate a lot drank a lot um yeah one thing about veranda sweet breakfast it did not disappoint me that was the one thing i was looking forward to every single morning was the breakfast they've got a wide choice and like in istanbul nasir kapadokia they've got so much more variety on their breakfast um, items from the juices to the coffee the tea the the, the egg the sausages and it's not just polone it's proper sausage um guys it was just so amazing everything was fresh um, I've got nothing to complain about in terms of the food there. Once again, it came with our accommodation. Favorite ending that you'd like to add? Uh, First point about Turkey. Okay. You need to actually make sure that you book well in advance. I think I think that's the is, best is, thing that we probably is, did. Is that um, accommodation? No, no, flights in advance. I think more than anything, after booking flights, it actually gives you a good idea in terms of how to budget for accommodation and spending oh yeah that's a there's always also always going to be unforeseen spending because i mean you're on holiday say whatever you're budgeting put double that amount if ever you're going you're going abroad i heard you mentioning earlier on 
you need to be able to be open to you know learning uh having to learn all these uh, turkish greetings you know mehaba it was something very eye opening i think more than, more than anything uh, like the least favorite place that you went to or visited or your least favorite moment in the trip uh Cappadocia definitely. I think <laughs> Cappadocia from the food uh, overpriced. Second thing is the food is very bland. Um they they had this chicken meal that I actually ordered. It tasted like in kokolati poili or dude. Mm. And then we really we fucking marinated so after that. Yo, that was the worst thing ever and uh the best one is definitely Antalya. Yo, Antalya was like I think we should have stayed there longer and okay. actually we should have probably started there. No, not started there. Probably definitely start there, not in there. Uh, most probably <laughs> yeah. not. There. I, I would recommend Antalya for anybody actually wants to go to uh, Turkey. Whether you want to PBL, when you want to Mazin, you you need to go to. Yeah, I met a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people doing PBLs do and surgeries yeah, yeah. and everything. So yeah, I think uh, Turkey, Turkey in general, was definitely a country uh, worth visiting. But uh, honestly speaking, I wouldn't do it twice. <laughs> I think it's a country that you normally want to just do once, and yeah, that's about it. For me, my favorite moment is at the beach. Mm -hmm. That's what I enjoyed the most. Like oh, out yeah. of the whole trip was the beach, definitely. Yeah, it's because it's fagan and sun, ah. sun lotion. Oh, was it was it fagan and baby? But okay, yeah. um, I think that's it. Then. And yeah, no, that's about it. I think Turkey definitely worth visiting. Though. Definitely worth visiting. Don't you think so? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's a great start off place. Like Kala Payana is great. Like oh. where are we going next this year? Mm. Uh, that's my cue. What's your name? Why are you crying? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please do comment, like, subscribe. If you have any other questions, please do let me know in the comment section. Um, as for me, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching once again. I'll see you guys in my next one.